Welcome to the Dr. Mudgo Podcast. I couldn't be more excited to have one of my closest friends, uh, Rasan Robinson here, who is the head strength and conditioning coach for the Long Island Nets, which is a subsidiary or the G League team for the Brooklyn Nets. Yes. And um, I've known Rasan now for almost exactly seven years. Yeah. And um, I have to, I would like to say it all started for Rasan as my personal trainer, but that's, that's, not, that's, not, that's actually not the truth. But Rasan has been my personal trainer since I moved out to Long Island. That's how I got to know Rasan so well. And over the course of these last seven years, I've just seen him climb up the ladder of strength and conditioning training for basketball athletes. But now he's working with professional athletes, yeah. which um, which is amazing to see because it was one of the things when seven years ago we were kind of getting to know each other and we were discussing, you know, like what kind of our goals are. And, yes. you know, that's something that you always aspired to do. And to see you sitting here with, you know, Brooklyn Nets gear working with the Brooklyn Nets, it's uh, it's an amazing thing to see, man. And, I'm, you know, I couldn't be prouder of you, and I couldn't be, you know, more blessed to have you in my life, my man. Thank you. Same here. You know, definitely um, it's been a blessing um, meeting you seven years ago. It was great. Uh, it's like we attracted energies, you know, in terms of the, that motivation as far as setting goals and doing what it needs to take to get to those goals. And honestly, you're really definitely one of my best clients that I've had because it's just so easy. You know, I lay out the program, we get to work, you don't complain, you get everything done. And obviously, seven years later, look how great you're looking, you know. So, right, thanks, thanks yeah. to you, man. <laughs> um, so, we're going to get into all of that because, you know, you're a big part of my journey, you know, in these mm -hmm. last seven years or so. And um, I definitely wanted to put some of that out there because, you know, without you in my life, I never would have been able to achieve some of my goals. Mm -hmm. Um, but, you know, one of the things that we always do when we start this podcast, especially for someone who's achieved like the level of, yeah. of success that you've had, I think my listeners like to know and I want to know, you know, like mm -hmm. how you personally define that word success. So what does success yes. mean to you, Rasan? Well, I feel success um, to me is accomplishing something that you have a true desire to accomplish. And Everybody can have a different desire. I truly feel that that desire is placed inside of us and it's unique to each one of us. And if your success is, could be some people it's money, some people it's certain different occupations, but whatever that is, that's, that's what you feel. If I accomplish this, then, you know, that's something that I want to do for the rest of my life. That's something I want to accomplish and have in my life, you know, is um, then you've achieved that success, you know. A lot of people do feel like it's, oh, this amount of money. Mm -hmm. But it could be somebody that, hey, I wanted, I wanted to help people become a teacher, you know, and now I'm living that passion and I'm helping others achieve what they want to achieve, you know. So whatever it is inside of you that you feel that you want to achieve, that's your success. Yeah. That's like embracing the hustling grind of whatever your goal is. And that's what I always say. For me, that's what success is. And, and you know, I'll, my definition of success is very similar to yours. And, you know, I think a lot of that has evolved. Like when you're someone's personal trainer and you spend four, sometimes five, and there's a point where we were training six days a week. Yes. <laughs> you evolve from being like more, you're a trainer, and then you become like a friend, and then you become like a therapist. Yes. And, you know, <laughs> and, uh, you know, so I think a lot of my thoughts and my thought process is a lot of that comes out of the discussions that we have. Definitely. When we're training, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and I love that, man. I love that definition, mm -hmm. you know. And, you know, you're someone who, you know, we talk about this stuff all the time. Yes. You know, I would say I know you super well. So we we're always talking about like motivational stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, why don't you check this guy out? You know, you introduced me to David Goggins mm -hmm. and, you know, a bunch of other folks. And, yes. you know, we're always kind of like picking each other's brain about that sort of thing. Because I think both of us are sort of geared towards uh, being around people that are positive. Exactly. And like surrounding yourself with people who have goals and are actuating those goals, you know, so when I, when I met you seven years ago, I was in, you know, I was like a skinny fat guy, you know, I was like 196 pounds. So it was like 20% body fat. Yeah. And you said to me like, what's your goal? And I, and I said, I want to be jacked. You know, yes, I remember. That, that's my yep. goal. And I was being perfectly honest with yep. you, you know, mm -hmm. and you said, all right, all right. Uh -huh. <laughs> like with a straight face, you're like, okay, you know, it's going to take you like three to five years. You saw like how, you know, how, how out of shape I was. And how long it was going to take to get there. But you were honest, it's going to take three to five years. I was like, all right, man, let's grind. Let's do it. You yes. know? And then, like, you know, I, 
we were just talking about it. I couldn't incline bench more than 65 pounds. Mm-hmm. I could probably bench press like 95 pounds. Yes. You know, now we're doing like 225 pounds. Yes. And like, you know, but it takes seven, it took three to five years to get there. Right. And we're still progressing. Um, but it's embracing that process. And, you know, I remember one of the things that we always used to talk about was you always used to try to like incorporate some functional stuff. And, you know, for my joints, I was like, listen, man, forget all that functional <laughs> shit. Like, I just want to look good with my shirt off. Man. Yeah, I remember you that. Know? Yeah. But we've had some good laughs through the years. But, yeah. you know, through all that time, you know, so I met you at Equinox. And when I went to Equinox, I said, you know, I talked to the, the uh, I guess it's like the training manager or yeah. something like that. Yes. And I said, I, I just want to work with your best trainer. Mm-hmm. And they, it wasn't even a question. They're like, oh, right, you got to work with Rasan Robinson. You know, yeah. So they hooked me up with you. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I know that was kind of, you were, that was sort of, you had done a bunch of other things before you were a trainer at Equinox at Roslyn. You were yeah. actually running an Equinox in Washington, D.C. You were very high up in the Equinox at New, in New Rochelle. I'm a Marinac. I'm a Marinac. Um, and, you know, it was a time in your life where Janelle, your wife, was doing a residency. Yes. And, you know, you had a young child at the time. I think mm-hmm. Skylar was like two, maybe. Yeah, she was around two and, years you know, old. you had to have a schedule that was very flexible to accommodate Janelle's residency schedule yes child care and all that yeah. sort of stuff so it just happened that you were working at that equinox when i met you but your goal really was you know you come from the basketball world and mm-hmm. you know you were a uh collegiate athlete you played yes. basketball at university of albany yeah and um, you know you'll, you have to tell us some some, some of all that because i think that really relates mm-hmm. to your story but when we would talk you would say you know you want to work with athletes basketball athletes mm-hmm. and you know help them progress you were working with some younger kids at the time yes exactly. um but how do you go from there you know like working with kids to like working with now nba professional mm-hmm. athletes and you know that's in, in a, such a short period and i know some of the steps but you know i want to hear how, how you actuated that dream yeah well you know um the first thing is clarity you have to have a clear vision you know, and even back then, I had a lot of things in my head of what I wanted to do and everything. And um, my wife, Janelle, always said, you know, you have all these different ideas, which are great ideas within the fitness industry mm-hmm. and performance and everything. Um, but, you know, what do you feel that you're most passionate about? And it was basketball and developing basketball players, you know, ultimately, you know, so once I decided that was going to be my goal, my vision, it was, I was clear, okay, now, and I'm the type of person that I want to be at, go to the highest level of whatever I'm doing, and the highest level is the NBA. So then I decided, okay, you know, I want to work with basketball players, and my ultimate goal is um, to be an NBA strength and conditioning coach. Now, then from there, my next step was like, okay, I need to find somebody that's doing what I'm doing. And I need to connect with that person and figure out what are the steps that they took to get there. And um, so I can get on that path, you know, because, you know, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. Success leaves clues. I tell that to everybody. So unless obviously you want if you're going to the moon and before 1969, yeah, maybe then you got (laughs) to. But mostly everything that we're trying to accomplish, a lot of people have accomplished already. And so we need to seek those people out and uh, make their make them our mentors. So that was the number one thing for me. So I, I sought out a, a few coaches that some were in the NBA, some worked with guys like you know big time guys like KD and stuff like that. And and um, so I connected with them. So th- that was kind of before Instagram and all that stuff was so big. Yes. Like, how did mm-hmm. you even connect with them? Well, um, I emails. I got their emails old fashioned. <laughs> Got emails, sent them emails, and um, they responded back to me. And they had uh, one one coach had a um, a uh, like a, a group of basketball strength and conditioning coaches, and so I signed up for that group. We actually did a training out in um, at the Nike headquarters in Portland for about five days, which was great because then I was around. That was with Alan Stein. Right? Yeah, Alan Stein. Yes, and then um, and then, so it was Alan Stein out there. He was the head of that. Um, and then this guy, uh, another um, really high-level basketball skills coach, Drew Hanlon, was out there. He works with he worked with like Jason Tatum, um, Bradley Beal, all to, all the top. Is he the guy with all the tattoos and stuff? No, no, uh, that's not. That, um, but he he he, he um, worked with a lot a lot of high-level pro athletes. So 
I went out there and, you know, I'm just like a sponge just trying to learn. And I was talking to him, Alan, about like how to get to this level how to, and working with these guys at this type of level and just soaking up that inf- information. Was he receptive to that? Very receptive because his whole purpose was to help those in, in the field trying to get to that next level. That's why the whole group was set up and everything like that. So, yeah, and that's the thing. When you do find those mentors, you know, um, and if they're receptive, you know, then you just I just latched on. And I'm, I'm the type of person, you tell me what to do, I'm doing it. You know, you tell me these are the steps, this is what needs to be done, I'm going to do it, you know. So that, I just got to work after that on different steps, start, then started con- trying to connect with other you know, strength coaches um, within the league and everything like that. Obviously, didn't get responses from most of them, but then got responses from some of them. And then, what percent would you say responded? Like, yeah, I think this is important for everyone to hear. Oh, one percent. Right. Crazy, yeah, right? Yeah. Sent out so many emails to try to connect, um, even by you know phone calls to the to the organizations and everything like that. Um, but my hustle, my grind was all fueled by my passion. And I tell people, <clears throat> with your, with what you want to achieve, you have to have that passion because that passion is going to allow you to keep going when you get rejected so many times, when things aren't going your way, you know, and it's if it's inside of you to be passionate about what you want to achieve, you're going to keep going no matter what. And I used to tell myself, you know what? Hey, I'm going to make this, you know, because I'm not going to give up. You know, so I just say, I'm going to keep chipping away, keep chipping away at it. And, you know, just think things just started opening up, you know, so doing work in the Long Island area, you know, I started working with like fourth graders, you know, and um, was working with them. But I treated that program like I was working with LeBron James, you know, like NBA players in, in a sense. I gave them everything I had, you know, in terms of. My my talent, my my time, my resources, and poured everything in, <clears throat> poured everything into it, just like I was working with NBA guys, you know, because I knew someday that I always believe that there is no on off switch. So like, if you're gonna do something, and you better be on, you can't just be oh, oh I'll do fifty percent today, seventy five percent, and then try to t- turn it up. No, I'm doing a hundred percent. I'm going at that. So that sets the habits for when you do eventually get in front of. Those those type of players, you know, you're all, you're already on, you like know. Like Kyrie and KD. Yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, um, you know that that's something right there. Then I was from there, I um was uh kind of I linked up with um one of the Lou High Long Island Lutheran high school out here, which was one of the top um basketball high school. Board. And they're current New York State champions. Yes, now they're current New York State champions. Yes. And so they have a rich tradition of, of um, success there um, with one of their point guards. And because um, I, I basically how I did that, I saw some things that I, I went to a game and I saw some things that he can improve on in terms of. He was a private client of yours. No, he was. He, he basically I went to a game and I saw some things that he can improve on uh-huh. in terms of movement wise that will help him move better on the court, become more explosive on the court. And um, it was one of, so I'm new to this whole, I was new to the whole like social media type thing. And so one of my um, friends, Justin, he was like, he's, he, he's like, hey, well, you need to tweet him and tell him what you could do for him and everything like that. So I didn't understand what a tweet <laughs> that stuff was back then. So I, I, he set everything up, you know, tweeted him. He, he, he responded back. And then um, like a couple of weeks later, he came into the facility that I was at with one of the co- assistant coaches, did some work, you know, and um, basically the assistant coach was like, this stuff is great what you're doing, you know, and because just through that session, just basically opening up the joints and, and, and doing some proprioceptive right. work and all that good stuff. He was feeling great just after that session, and um, from so there. Just to recap, mm-hmm. you went to a game, Just you just went to a Lula, went to, Lula yeah. game. You saw the point guard and mm-hmm. you said, you know what, I could probably help him with these certain things. Yes. You cold basically messaged him. Like, yes. He doesn't know who you are, but it's like, hey, I'm Rasan Robinson. Mm-hmm. I'm a strength and conditioning coach, and I think I could help you get better. Yes. And mm-hmm. then he responded. And then he responded. And this yeah. is like one of probably 100 messages that you had sent out. 
to d- various people. To various people, right. yes. Uh-huh. And um, yes, he, he yeah. responded to that. That's crazy. Yes, I know. And then, you know, had him come in to work with him. He liked it. I didn't know that the assistant coach was going to come and um, bring him to the facility. He brought him to the facility. He Obviously, he oversaw the training right. and everything, and he liked what he saw. So then we talked, and then from there, he's like, well, you know, I want you to introduce you to the head coach because, you know, I think what you have is something that they could, they could be very beneficial to our team. You know, even, you know, the team obviously is a very good team, but uh, just like great teams, they always want to go to another level. Right. So then that got me an interview with the head coach. Coach and, Buck. Coach Buck, yes, um, who I'm really good friends with. He's a great guy. Uh, you know, his, his program over there is amazing and the way yeah. he sets the culture and everything like that. Um, the character of people is such a great family. And so I was just, I was fortunate to get a meeting with him and sit down and talk with him. And um, he was saying, you know, he wants to go from great to elite, you know, and he feels like performance is the way that's going to take him to that next level. Then I just came in and started working with him. He played at Wake Forest and stuff, yeah, right? So yes, he, kinda, he was you know, at Blue High and then like, Wake yeah. Forest, yes. Mm-hmm. And then, um, then yes, yeah, so then it was towards the end of the season before, before they were going upstate and everything. So I worked with them for like a couple of weeks and uh-huh. um, he he was impressed with that. And then after that, we just got started the program going from the beginning of the school year and everything. And that next year, you guys went to the finals, right? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So we lost to the finals that yeah, year. I remember that. Yeah. Um, but, you, but the very next year, I think they won, right? Yeah, two years What's later they won. Yes, yeah. So yeah, it's crazy. Mm-hmm. Right? It's just crazy how things like that happen. You know, it's all from one yes that you got yeah. from a sixteen or fourteen or fifteen year old kid mm-hmm. that just put things on that trajectory because you were so passionate about your goal that you were relentless about it. Yes, you know, and mm-hmm. because of that Lou High opportunity, is that what opened the door for working with the Nets? It's just, it's just crazy how when you get into that like positive momentum and keep the energy going and everything and just keeping your vision going you know um i myself i personally write down my goals every day and that was my goals i and i write it in the form of i am i am an nba strength and conditioning coach and the craziest thing I, in my mind was i would always think like Hopefully, New York Knicks, you know, stuff like yeah. that, because I grew up watching a Nick as a Nick fan and everything. Like I do with the Nets, man. <laughs> you know, and um, it's interesting because one of my clients um, took me to uh, a Nick game for my my birthday, and I was actually we were courtside, and I was, you know, that was like the closest I ever got to a game. You know, it was I was actually on the floor and everything yeah. like that. And just something came over me when watching them come out and watching the the, um, the strength coach, you know, get them warmed up and everything. And then from something came over me and said, "I'm going to be out there," you know. And it, it just in my I had my imagination of me yeah. being out there on on that court. You visualized it. Then. I visualized it, and about twelve months later. I was on the Madison Square Garden court, yeah. you know, um, as a strength and conditioning coach for a preseason game with for Brooklyn versus um, New York. Yeah, it was amazing. I remember that Instagram post, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's just like it actually brought tears to like coming out. It was it was a, a mo- very emotional. Oh, sure, <clears throat> yeah, when it, coming out the tunnel and you know it brought tears to my of eyes course. coming out that tunnel and everything, and um, you know it's just. For me, I, you know, really want to help others. And um, as far as all, everybody in my family are teachers, you know, um, they, so basically I feel what I'm doing. I may not be a teacher in the classroom, but I feel like as a coach and I I love coaching because it allows me to help others, help others achieve their goals, achieve their dreams, um, educate them so they can get better and um just like the whole teaching aspect of it is is what i love about coaching you know every day i wake up in terms of coaching i get an opportunity to be an impact in somebody's life and that that's the best feeling in the world you know and so now on the flip side of it when we go back to the mentors and now 
people are contacting me, DMing me and everything like that. And so I remember when I was on that side. So, yeah, I may not be able to get them (coughs) what they exactly need, but I'm going to help them, lead them in the right direction or try to situate them, impart that knowledge on them so they can get on the right path of whatever it is that they're trying to achieve within their, 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 their journey, you know. Because, you know, there's people that helped me along the way, even though, you know, obviously you're, it is a small percentage, but that small percentage allowed me to get to where I am right now. Obviously, I'm going to keep going and everything, but you always got to give back and help, help others, you know. No, Mm -hmm. totally, man. Yeah. I mean, I I couldn't agree with you more. We talk about it all the time. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, Just kind of take a few steps back. Yes. You know, so how did you go from Luhai to working with the Nets. I mean, that was like a, that was a pretty big leap. Yes. You know, Mm -hmm. and you know, just, I think it's just interesting to me how like, you know, I mean, it's crazy. Like literally two or three years later, like you were, you know, you sent me pictures from Vegas and you're like hanging out with like Zion and like LeBron is there. Like, you know, like all these, you know, you're you're in in with NBA athletes. Yes. Yes. Which is something that you talked about wanting to do like seven years ago. Yes. But the time frame from when you actually started, you know, you're working with Lou High, mm-hmm. and that was like a pretty huge deal. Like, being yes. a strength coach for an elite high school basketball team, mm-hmm. the, the number one team in New York State. Mm-hmm. To go from that to working with a professional team, like in a matter of like a year, essentially, or a year and a few months, a year and a half, mm-hmm. how does that happen? Well, number one, it's my faith, you know, my faith in God. You know, I always pray for God to direct me in the right where he wants me to be and I always ask for patience and just humility and showing me the way you know and revealing what you want me to do so I always ask for that and it's like the timing because okay this vision you know started like we said seven seven years ago to get to the NBA and just the way the timing remember there was no Long Island Nets there wasn't even in, in existence. So, um, and then when the first year of the Long Island Nets was um, five, four years ago, four years ago, no, yeah, four years ago. So um, they were actually in Brooklyn. They did everything in Brooklyn. They practiced in Brooklyn. They went to the Barclays, and then while they were setting up the Nassau Coliseum, and to come move to Long Island, and um, I didn't. Know all that was going on without me even knowing that. So then what they did, they even they set up practice um, to kind of introduce themselves to, to the Long Island area, open practice at Luhai. Oh, really? Yes, yeah. So That's I, crazy, man. Yeah, so then, you know, they set that up. But unfortunately, I wasn't even, I wasn't around at that time because I, I had something else to do. But I guess, you know, between... Long Island and Coach Buck and the relationship, you know, they formed and now that they're, they're coming out to Long Island and they're looking for a head strength coach, you know, he had mentioned my name and then I get a, I get a message on LinkedIn from the president of Long Island that's basketball and I'm looking at it as like, hey, you know, got your information, want to um, talk to you about a possible position as head strength coach for the Long Island Nets. Wow. So I'm looking at this, I was like, wait, is, is this real? Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So I, res- crazy. I responded, um, got resume. A few weeks later, I'm in the in the um, Sunset Park, the the Brooklyn um, Nets facility. It was like a dope. Place, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Oh, amazing facility for an interview, and then just things went from That's there. Crazy. Got hired, and you know, next thing you know, um, at the Brooklyn Nets facility, training there, and um, and then eventually working with, with, with the Brooklyn Nets player. Then I, then I, then at the end of October, the, with the Long Island Nets coming back to Long Island. But it's just amazing how that is. But it's all the timing, and and your, I, I attribute that to, to faith, you know. And I tell people my faith is very strong, and that's the, that's the key to, to um, when everything seems like it's, it's going crazy, I just can't continue to have a strong face cause, faith because I know so many times in my past when I was facing certain issues, uh, it was God that brought me through and showed me the way and everything like that. And it happens over and over. 
and it just how things came together. It, it's just amazing, you know. It's almost a story like you can't, yeah, you can't make up. So like I always tell people, God starts from impossible, starts from not possible, impossible. So He does things so you know that you didn't do that. There's no way I can uh, say, oh yeah, I'm the reason why. I got from Luhai to the NBA, you know, G League and stuff like that. No, just that was because of him and, and the faith that I have. And it's just, just amazing, you know. And and it's always now just, you know, continue to master my craft and, you know, just be the best that I can be so I can help others. Because I, I, I just, I'm just like when the team, when the guys do well, because obviously the guys in the G League, their goal is to take that next step, whether it's within a NBA or get a good contract overseas, you know. But I, I get so happy when guys get like 10 day contracts or, you know, or get contracts overseas where they're now take care of their families and everything like that. And, or, and sign with the NBA. I mean, yes. a bunch of guys mm-hmm. that did that. A bunch of guys have done that over the past few years. Yeah. And just to be a part of that is just amazing and just so happy for those guys, you know. Yeah, there's there's so much that you just said that's I think so incredible. One is, like the faith that you have, it really just points to like your humility to me. Like mm-hmm. you know, you're probably the most humble person that I know. You mm-hmm. know, and it's not like this fake humble, like a humble brag. It's a genuine humble. Like yeah. you're, or have you have so much humility, which I admire oh, so thank much, you. man. Thank you. And uh, the other thing is like Coach Buck. He probably gave you a huge plug, yeah. you know, to mm-hmm. work with the Long Island Nets because mm-hmm. of who you are and how you perform, like working for Luhai. Mm-hmm. That's like such a selfless act of him. Oh, yeah. Right? yeah like, I, he's a great I mean, like if, like if the selfish move would be like, you know, yeah, Rasan's great, but he's, he's staying with us. Mm-hmm. He was like, you know, Rasan has like so much potential. He needs to be working mm-hmm. with professional athletes. I mean, that, in my mind, that's what I'm thinking of yes. how it went down. Mm-hmm. Because like the leap you made is staggering. Like to yeah. go from working for a high school team, to working with professional, good, go to the professional level. You know, like someone's gotta like be like this is this guy's. You know, got a lot of talent, which is obviously you have tons yes. of talent, mm-hmm. and it's cool, man. It's just it's amazing that there's this that much good. And you're also someone who I think like me really sees the good in the world. You know, yes. like it's all about positivity. Like you know, like I said, surrounding yourself with positivity, but by doing that it kind of propels your goals so much, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, putting yourself in that place, being selfless. And I remember because we were working a lot together. Yes. When you were out in the blue, I happened to be around the block from my house. And, you know, we were always, you know, I was always kind of like up to date with what you were doing. Yes. And working with the team and like, you know, and I I know, and I know for you how much being part of a team means. Yeah. yeah. Again, which is another, which also points to your humility. It's like your Mm -hmm. success is not like you doing something for yourself your success is the team performing well and i remember when luhai lost in the finals how how much you felt how much that yes. hurt you oh, know because yeah. you felt for the mm-hmm. kids yes i felt mm-hmm. or when you know I, I was actually fortunate enough to be able to go to some of the long island nets games when you guys made it to the finals yeah and mm-hmm. i was there during the playoffs and like we were so invested because in obviously you were there yes. and like you know, you're one of my close mm-hmm. friends and you know the kids we all went mm-hmm. and watched the game but like you know, the highs like you know some of those games were crazy yeah. comeback wins, mm-hmm. like you know like cr- you know on the road, they're just like it was crazy crazy wins, mm-hmm. and like the just the level of pride that you felt and happiness, like the genuine happiness for the team and being part of that team. Yes, I mean that's mm-hmm. just so cool, man, mm-hmm. and that's what I love about you. Man. Thank you. you know, thank like that you. that that mm-hmm. to me is is gold, man. Mm, I appreciate that. Yeah. And you know. And I think, uh, you know, I think even the way you describe, like when you're working out with the kids, mm-hmm. with the, I mean, their kids are like 18, 19 years old, mm-hmm. but they're professional athletes, which yes. is crazy. But the way they kind of rally around, like, you know, like Body by Roth. Like, yes. And, <laughs> yeah, I, I, that's just cool, man. Yeah. And, I, and you bring that energy there. I mean, that's yeah. something that's so special mm-hmm. that you bring to a team, man. You know, and I don't know if you realize that, but it is. You I, know. Thank you. Thank, I really appreciate that. Yeah. You know, it's just whenever you're living your passion you know it's 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 interesting because like whenever like over in brooklyn at practices or and stuff like that with the, you see another coach or, or and they say how you doing and pretty, we answer living the dream you know because yeah. we're all living that dream yeah, you man. know we're all, we're all blessed and fortunate to be doing something so amazing that we love that we want to do 
you know, and um, and it doesn't and mean that you dream to do you that know? you yeah that you dream to do that you want to do, and um, but I tell people there is the it, the journey is is it's not easy, you know, and that's you know that's something where like uh, yes things obviously are where they heading and they're projecting the right th- way, but it's not easy going through it, you know. There's a, there's obstacles, there's setbacks, there's times in the beginning where you're getting rejected, 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 where you're just like, is this even worth it? You know, why, why don't I just go get like a nine to five, you know, whatever, right, you know, especially right. if you have a family and everything like that, or things even work. But no, when you have that passion, you say, I'm gonna I'm gonna make that, I'm gonna make it. And it's the journey that really builds you and that resilience that really defines you. And um, because you, I think it's the journey is is prepares you, allows you to become that person that you need to be for when you achieve what you the success that you achieve. So right on. Otherwise, if you were to achieve that, that success, you'd get eaten up, you know, and you wouldn't be able to handle it. But um, it's so I just learned over the years just embrace that journey, yeah. and um, you know, like you say, fail to the top, fail your way to the top. So, hey, another reject, great. Okay, now I'm going to, what else do I, next thing I need to do, or how can I do it better? But instead of getting just down about things, there, there's a, there's always, a, a, I feel, if you're resourceful, there's always a way and that you can um, get to where you want to get to. Got to think outside of the box sometimes. You got to, you got to, you know, I traveled across country sometimes to meet certain people that I, I needed to connect with. You know, um, yeah, you know, it's just you just have to do those things if you really want it like that, you know, and to have that desire and, and to have that um, commitment, you know, it's, it's, it's very important. And you need to have the discipline along that way. It's just even like working out, as you know, you didn't get to where you got to, you know, I'll take tomorrow off or not. You know, no, I tell people all the time you were four days five days committed for seven years you know and people see you and they're like oh yeah you know he 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 works he works hard but you know he got to where he got to where he got got to um from work you know he works hard but they don't know how hard you work in terms of your discipline and your commitment i don't think 99.9 percent of the people could do what you've done, you know, staying on that path, staying the course. Most people you tell three to five years, they're like, the ones that do say yes, are like, yeah, yeah, okay, I could do this, I could do this. And in about three months, you know, they're they're done. And then the others, they, I can't do it. <laughs> I yeah. just simply can't do it. And so, and I think that's why we work so good together because we have that inside of us, like, okay, you know, whatever it takes type a- attitude. Yeah. And um, so just as far as achieving goals, whether it's within if you want to do something within sports, or obviously the medical field or whatever you want to do, you have to, number one, just have that clear vision. Number two, you have to believe 110 percent in yourself that you can do it because there's going to be so totally. many things that so many people that are going to say, no, nah, you shouldn't be doing this. You shouldn't be doing that. And then you have to have that commitment, just that commitment, no matter what. I am gonna do this day after day after day, and it's always the, the 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 just the small little steps over time. So true, man. That build up, you know, it's 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 like what you did. Small, just put that small steps in, small steps in, and then next thing you know, wow, it's a big build. You know, this the, the yeah. body that I want, or I'm at this level. You you know, yeah, but there's, there's two things. It's funny that you're it's so funny that you're saying this. So. You know, like every couple of days, my publicist will send me some stuff for media. Like, you know, this magazine wants to know about uh, whatever it is, a dermatology mm-hmm. thing. Or I'm doing some, at least some of them are like entrepreneurial things. Yes. And one of the things today was, you know, as fall comes, like a, fall is now like September is like the new January, right? Okay, so yes. How am I going to mm-hmm. like set my goal or reset my mindset to achieve a goal? And that what I said was, is exactly what you just said. I was like, you know, you need to set a long-term goal. So whether that's I want to lose 10 pounds or get mm-hmm. in shape or whatever it is. But you also have to establish daily wins. Yes. So like, what, mm-hmm. like I'm going to walk 10,000 steps today or I'm going to mm-hmm. 
eat high protein, low carb today, or I'm gonna you know get my workout in. Those and and you'll fail. Like there's times you're gonna yeah. mess up, but those small wins, like win after win after win, day after day after yeah. day, week after week, month after month, year after year, yeah. it adds up. It adds, you know, yes. and th- and then you're at then you know eventually like you're kind of like at your goal, mm-hmm. and you're like, oh wow, now what do you do? And then you set another goal. Mm-hmm. You know, exactly. but it's um. It's like, or that, you know, that, that one thing you told me about well Smith with the, you know, making Bricks, a wall yeah. with the brick by brick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and then all of a sudden you do every one perfect brick. One perfect brick And then you have like, time. you know, after like, if you do one perfect brick a day, mm-hmm. after a year, you have a perfect wall. Yes, you know? exactly. I, I love things like that mm-hmm. because I think that it's so easy to sort of wrap your head around that concept that, you know what, you can have a huge goal, you know, which is great. But, you, but your roadmap to get to that goal mm-hmm. is every step that you take yes you know mm-hmm. and it's going to take you it could take a thousand steps it could take ten thousand steps it could take a hundred thousand steps yeah but as long as you keep moving in the right direction mm-hmm. you will get there yeah. you know and, and and one of the other things i want to speak to which you said is like you know and i think this is where we are very synergistic is like you know we're going to get it done you know mm-hmm. there's so many times like i know i'm getting now i'm working out four times a week there was a time where i was working out six times yes. a week mm-hmm. but i'm old and frail my body <laughs> no. can't handle it, handle it anymore <laughs> But so we, we, we work out four times a week, and I'm working out four times a week no matter what. Yes, exactly. You know? So there'll be times where I'll say, hey, Ra, I got to work out at 445 or 515 tomorrow mm-hmm. morning, you know, because I got whatever going on. Yes. And, you know, you've never once said no. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't do it. Like, you're in my grind. Yeah. Like, you know, if mm-hmm. I need to get that workout in at, like, 430 in the morning, you're at my house at 430 in the yes. morning. Mm-hmm. And it's awesome because it's like we're a team. Yes, you definitely. Know? Which is what I love. Mm-hmm. But one of the things, you know, I think – Anyone can do it. I think everyone can do it. You know, so you're right. Ninety nine percent of people won't do what I did or do do what you do, but ninety nine percent of people can. Oh, they all can. You know, they all can. It's just it's just having the mindset. You have to have the mindset, no matter what. You know, um, remember I used to tell you about Kobe Bryant. Remember when he first got in the league, he said he's going to be the best NBA yeah. player ever, and he realized, hey, if I get up at an hour at four a.m. I can get another hour or two of work in, do that each day, and over time, that's going to add up. It's going to eventually start separating me from the field. So he got up 4 a.m., 4 a.m. no matter what, and did all the things he needed to do. And, like, in the beginning, he didn't see much separation, like, the first couple of years. But then by year five, he noticed, whoa, then year seven, and, you know, and just, you know, kept at it like that. And then you start just separating yourself. But that was all a decision that was made, you know. And sticking to the plan. And sticking to the plan. I mean, there were times, like, with me, when at that time, when I, during that period, when I actually, just life got to consume me, first year with, with the um, Brooklyn Long Island Nets, you know. And I wanted to make sure I was doing everything that I needed to do. So staying up late and doing all the things I had to do to make sure I was giving them everything that they needed, you know, and the players and everything. So I kind of put myself aside in terms of my eating habits and exercising, found myself at 211 pounds, the heaviest I've ever been. And I was just like, that's it. So I made that commitment. I never even noticed it until you showed me like your before. The before, (laughs) yeah. So I found myself overweight at that time and then i just said that's it i'm getting up i'm making that commitment i'm doing what i need to do and i got up at 4 a.m 4 a.m club yeah 4 a.m club every morning and just chipped away at the cardio at everything that i needed to do um and then over time got back down and like took time like nine ten months so i got yeah Yeah. six everything back where i was like down to 175 but and there were times where we could be out late. We could be coming back from somewhere. We could be coming home at 12, 1, or even a game. You know, again, I'd still get up at 4 a.m. Mm-hmm. I made it. I made it. My alarm set for that. Still getting up at 4 a.m. Nothing stopped that. So then it became such a habit. Yeah. It was just automatic. And that's what I tell people. That one of the things is you need to get success habits, okay? And one of the – so in your routine, get a success routine and that was part of my success routine getting up at 4 a.m and then going to the gym doing the cardio that i needed to do and then it eventually gets into your subconscious where you automatically you're up no matter what at 4 a.m and you're at that gym 
and you're knocking out what you need to knock out and you're getting all that done yeah. and that that's just so important and because you're we're really like two habits away from what we need to be one of you know it could be you know if do you procrastinate uh, so if you procrastinate then make it a habit now whenever you have something just get it done get it started right now just instead of putting it to the side and we're all you know kind of victims of that in mm -hmm. terms of like oh we got to do something we'll put it to the side mm -hmm. no you get it just get it done at the moment and start making that a habit over and over but the thing is like whether it's little things so it's not even just like something big no if something little just has to be knocked out do that right away so then that just starts becoming a habit mm -hmm. you know and over time it becomes a habit that you're just you get it done you know, and that those are those. That's such the key things and understanding that the certain habits, success habits. It's really changing. If you want to change, get achieve certain successes, it's just certain behaviors that you have to change. You know, are you willing to 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 do the things like to to email certain people yeah. now, DM or all this type, whatever you know, hundreds of people over and over. You know, do the things that you need to do, maybe outside of your comfort zone that you you're not comfortable doing. And um, doing those things over and over again, and so you can get closer and closer to where you need to be. Good. It's doing, not saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's executing, not making excuses. Exactly. You know, it's all the things that we talk about a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, Rob, one of the things I want to talk about because I think this is something that also mm -hmm. that I value um, when we talk about stuff. Something that I really value is culture. Yes. You know, and we talk mm -hmm. about this a lot, and it's something to be quite frank is is something I struggle with. You know, in having a small office and trying to establish the culture that, you know, is sort of feeds on itself and uh, where, you know, everyone's like a team player, everyone is positive. Yes. And, you know, something that I think, I'm so glad you didn't, I could say this, you can't, I'm so glad you didn't end up with the Knicks <laughs> and you're part of the Nets. Um, because when you talk about the Nets, it's the culture is like, it's yes. awesome, man. It's yeah. like this infectious, mm -hmm. positive culture that it just can't not be successful yes you know yes. and it starts from the top it starts you know, from the which top with sean mark sean mark yeah. and mm -hmm. um you know just the vibe that he's set up even when you go to, like i love going to nets games and mm -hmm. we go to predominantly nets we go to one nets game a year just because i grew up a nets mm -hmm. fan but then we'll go to like four or five nets games yes. just because mm -hmm. the vibe is just so much better um, yeah the, the whole way the, the whole way everything is set up and you know it starts from the top mm -hmm. you know yes and just the way you describe the way he interacts with you. He interacts with everyone else on the team, mm -hmm. and you know the coaching staff, the players. Yes. Just give us like a little blurb about like why the culture is so special there. Well, I feel that with in regards with the Nets, um, that Sean Marks, who's the the general manager, he came from a winning culture in San Antonio, so he's been around what it takes the behaviors and culture is behavior the certain type of behaviors that you need to have and be in order to become successful and those the people that you have in your staff not only just the co players and the coaches and add everything the front office have to instill those similar characteristics and behaviors in order to make it successful and being about team you know is important being about family you know really caring about other people and what's going on in their lives and everything like that is is, is truly important so when you bring when you've been around winning in a great culture and you go somewhere else and you bring that type of culture you say this you get the right i always we talk about this the bus mm -hmm get the wrong people off the bus and the right people on the bus and that you got always oh, got to get the right people that fit that character and everything onto the bus that's going to um, uplift the organization and 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 that culture and family and it's it's I've been fortunate because what um, coach buck did was at Luhai same thing it was like the family the culture getting the right people there great kids you know character mm -hmm. kids um and just a whole family organization. So it was great for me and their winners, you know. And so it was great for me going from one great family at Lujai to another great family within the whole Brooklyn Long Island Nets organization. And just seeing like how it's so similar in terms of 
that culture and that behavior and that character and the people every you know everybody cares about you you, you know and it cares about your success and everything like that and um i think that's that's really what 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 starts it and and then yes obviously the talent and everything but when you have the right people on you can de- you can um develop all the talent and you will attract talent JD yeah <laughs> you'll attract talent yeah. along with that as well and um you know i think that's so important and it does obviously it starts at that yeah. the leadership position to, to to bring that down and it's just, i've been fortunate to to be around um in terms of two great organizations two great um, families and cultures of that success you know is embedded in them with great character yeah, yeah well mm-hmm. I think they would say the same thing about you, man. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Well, like me, Rasan, you're a husband and a father as well. Yes. Yeah. I, mean, I, I know you're going to turn into a pumpkin soon. <laughs> you got to get home. Um, but, man, I I really love this conversation, yeah. man. And mm-hmm. um, I, I'm i just so proud of you. Thank you. I'm so blessed to have you in my life. I appreciate that. And to call that. you one of my best friends. Thank and, you, you know, thank you. The only problem for me now is you're getting so big, man, that I got, I got to have like a whole slew of backup trainers now. <laughs> but I love it, man. And, and, and I couldn't be happier to have you here. And I'm so glad you took the time, man, to sit with us and, no, and share your story, my man. I truly appreciate that. And um, definitely, um, I hope this podcast helps somebody, even if it's one person, in terms of they may be on their journey right now and they may be frustrated and faced with some roadblocks and obstacles. But just here to say that you can do it you know you can do it just let's evaluate certain things and and let's just stay resilient and um, if that desire is placed in your heart to get to what you want that means that's for you and I tell people that's uniquely for you and we just have to see what we need to do to get around these obstacles but just stay the course and um, you can do it let's get it man let's get it (laughs) all right that's it. yes Thank you for listening to the Dr. Mudgill podcast. The audio for this podcast can be found on Apple's iTunes and SoundCloud. Let's get it.